so much for taking the time to speak with us. I really appreciate it. Let's jump right into the album. What do you think was the biggest obstacle or challenge to getting the new record done? Um, well, <clears throat> it's always the, the, the songwriting, really. Uh, that That's always the toughest part of the gig when you think about it, because it is, after all, you know, trying to create something out of nothing, you know, and and, uh, and the fact that it's not always easy, because, you know, for me, the way I work is that, you know, I really actually go out of my way trying not to think about anything, or especially plan <clears throat> what we should sound like, or, you know, just think about stuff like, you know, hmm, I'm wondering how they're going to react to this riff, or whether the fans are going to like that, or, you know, and, uh, because, you know, that that's sort of just, that that's only going to throw me off the track, you know, and I'm going to end up writing something that's not genuine. So that's why I really try not to think about anything, do what comes out naturally, and keep it spontaneous, and, and really just hope for the best, hope that people will like it then, you know. And, and uh, so there's that, and, and, and of course... Uh, well, something um, something unfortunate happened that we parted ways with our uh, guitar player, and uh, <clears throat> it, it's pretty crazy the way it went down because uh, the decision was made three days before uh, we hit the studio, and uh, yeah, yeah. So it's it's like it's just one of those things that you don't really have time to sit down and cry about it. You know, it's it's like we were more, you know, basically all of us. You know, would just go like, "All right, talk later. Let's go make an album." You know what I mean? You know, and, and that's how it went down, really. And it was, you know, obvious that you know I was gonna, hit, <clears throat> I was gonna roll, uh, you know, just double shift and, and do all the guitars. And I'm, that's okay. I mean, I, I wrote all the riffs anyway, and 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 uh, I I'm a guitar player after all, so it's like that's what I do. And I, I had already actually moved into the studio um, two weeks before uh, we started recording anyway because I still had one and a half songs actually missing and I feel like I always get more done when I'm out of my home environment you know because it's it's just too relaxing in there you know and too many distractions but but anyway so you know <clears throat> Um, it, it it was more act like physical work, but you know uh, I love working. You know I, I get such cake out of it. Plus, plus you know, if anything, um, it came. I mean, like the guitars came out tighter than on the previous ones. So I mean, at least something good came out of a bad situation, which is pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah. And talk about what led to the departure. What do you think it was? Well, um, well. Without going into too too many details, you know, I think that, well, basically what it was uh, was that you know we had we were at a phase where we wanted to sort of have have a new beginning and reinvent ourselves, you know, on a certain level, and 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 you know everybody everybody all four of us you know were like pushing it harder and putting more effort on the band and, and just working extra extra hard and he he wasn't um quite there with us you know as far as like the level of uh work ethics and you know stuff stuff like that so we we, we felt like everyone's better off if we part ways at this point and and that's what happened and and yeah it, it was three days before we hit the studio but it was not i mean like it was something that everyone's, everybody was sort of anticipating already, and and uh, I had to be honest, like I had decided a month or so before that that I was gonna do all the guitars anyway, because like I said, it wasn't just working out with him, and 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 I'm really, I mean, I don't want to talk shit or anything. It's just that you know that happens, you know, it's life, and and. Uh, you know, you, you can't, you can't just, you can't dwell in it. It's, it's, it sucks. It really does, man. You know, because he was around for, uh, for twelve years, and you know, and for us, you know, band, it, it really is family. And losing losing a member, it, it's a big deal for us. 
because when you know we're not we're not a tough band you know if we would change members every every other weekend but <laughs> um but you know you gotta move on and that there that that's that really hey it's alexia from chilling bottom and you are watching artisan news do you think that led to the album being tired the you know chaos um no, actually, that song was uh, written w w way before uh, anything. Because uh, for this album, I actually wrote a couple of, couple of songs where I would uh, write the lyrics first and not the music, which was the first time for me. Because uh, I don't, like, like nowadays, uh, I just decided that I, I, I'm not going to drink when I'm on the road. Because I, I just, I, I couldn't deal with the hangovers and, and, and the fact that that it, it becomes a necessity kind of you know it's like you're, you you, you phys physically get addicted to it you know which is, I hate that I don't I, I don't like it and uh, you know I wasn't feeling healthy and I was I didn't feel good when I was, when I was on the stage and and don't get me wrong, I was never the guy, you know, would get like all, all effed up, you know, before the show or anything. I wasn't that guy, but but just the fact that I wasn't feeling good and and uh, you know, I I I had stomach ulcers, you know, I I was vomiting blood before the show, sometimes during the show, and it's like you know, it, it's not like fun party stuff anymore. It, it was it, it had become pretty dark, and you know I. I had to learn. I mean, we, which I usually have the, the the tendency to learn things the hard way. So I did, and and I needed to kind of like prove to myself that I can sort of drink like a normal person. That I go to a bar sometimes with my friends, you know, and just you know, and I, I like it. You know, I, I like to get you know, I like to get drunk and get retarded. What the hell? That's just. But but that's it, you know. And when I'm on the road. Hell no! Like I don't want that. I mean, you know, once you get once you get used to it, I don't. I, I really don't want to go back. Cause like the honestly, the first tour that I did completely sober was a uh, pretty. Well, it was quite the test because it was a ten ten and a half week European tour, and <clears throat> so I felt. I kind of felt, you know, isolated from the rest of the group, you know, and, and it was very weird, you know, because, like, I was always the party guy, and always, I was the the instigator and the crazy guy, and you know what I mean? And all of a sudden, like, I didn't know what to do with myself. But after that, you know, I got used to it, and then all of a sudden, it's like, this is awesome, you know, I feel good, dur I mean, like, during the day, and I, I, feel, I feel great on the stage, you know, which obviously is... <laughs> The most important things so you gotta set your priorities you know so there's that yeah i mean it, it, that, that's what i was going to ask because like you said you had a reputation as that guy now mm -hmm. it has your bandmates have to be supportive of where you are and understand were they did you have any kind of like oh say, look I, I you know i still have a beer or two but i'm not going to be over the top because i want to feel good yeah explain that to them and yeah yeah oh yeah oh totally dude yeah i mean i think they, <laughs> I'm pretty sure I did them a favor too, you know, and because at that point, you know, like people, people around me were or actually had been pretty worried about me for a long time, and you know, but I'm, of course, you know, the stubborn son of a bitch that I am, you know, I mean, I would either either just tune out or just even get angry if somebody started talking about it, you know, so. Um, Yes, yeah, yeah. I mean, they're they're definitely supportive of 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 the thing, and and I don't mind because I'm, I'm it's like I'm not the the kind of guy who who gets bothered if people drink like in front of me. I mean, I I, I don't I, I wouldn't want to be like I I want the guys to have fun and like I want them to party if they want, if feel like it. I mean, honestly, everyone's dialed back a little bit because we're older, you know. It's like you're not 22 anymore, and it's it, it's it's just stupid. That's just stupid to try to kind of like keep up with 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 the, with the type of partying that you did when you were like you know twenty five or whatever. And hey, man, you know, back in the day, it's it's like I I can honestly say that I mean like I did it all, and 
than some. So it's like, you know, at least I, I, I got it out of my system. So I don't have to, I don't ever have to feel uncomfortable about the fact that, like, like I, I, let's just put it this way. I mean, I'm totally comfortable with, like, you know, just going back to the tour bus and watching a movie after the show. Like, you don't feel like you're missing out. Yeah, because, like, being there, done that, you know, times 10. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that was, um, well, lyrically, it was actually, uh, uh, Morgan, which is, uh, one of the goddesses of the underworld, and, uh, I came up with this idea of, like, a, a mortal man being obsessively in love, uh, with the goddess, which, you know, probably is not gonna work out, <laughs> and, uh, you know, so it, it, it is actually a very dark and, uh, twisted love song. And I think the cool thing about it is that even though it might sound fictional, but it's really not, and people can still relate <clears throat> relate to it, because Morrigan can mean so many different things for so many different people, you know? It's all about the way they interpret things. And, and uh, yeah. So you know that that's you know for for you know for the lyrics and as far as the music, it, it's just one of those things that came up with the main riff, which um, definitely has a certain type of sadness in it. You know, and when I say sadness, I don't I don't mean the annoying whiny kind. I hate that. <laughs> but sadness, as in like you know something you would hear in 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 like. Um, a classical music or something like that or um, like the cool kind you know not the yeah I don't want to name any names because there's just too much work nowadays trying to get away with it not in, the, in an emo kind of way in yes way. exactly yes. exactly right. yeah I know exactly what you're yeah now you talk about some of the songs that you said that you worked in reverse as far as doing the lyrics what were some of those tracks and how do you Looking back, how do you think they turned out writing that way? Would you write that way in the future? Um, well, it was honestly just uh, two or three songs, and I think that it really did me a favor because, like, it was something something new for me, something different, uh, and I, I approached the whole song differently because I already had the lyrics, which sort of led me into hearing the vocal line in my head already, but I only only had that. So then I started building the guitar riff around <clears throat> the vocal line, and uh, it, it it came out it came out uh, definitely like as something new, so to speak, at least new for bottom, you know. So it's 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 actually very cool to try out different things, and yeah. Well, actually, <laughs> now I'm going like back to why I, what I started to explain about like you know not drinking on the road is basically so I would have free time I would have time during the day to do something as opposed to lying on the couch feeling sorry for myself so I mean like I, I, I write lyrics or I write something that's what I usually do and obviously 15 years since called the rebirth what, what, what do you remember about that time period in um, it was it, it, it was just like it was very exciting, of course, you know, because I mean, that was just around the time when we were really, really starting to get, like, be on the map and, you know, get out there and getting more and more recognition and touring and, and, uh, and this was right before Hey Crew Death Roll basically came out and, which is when things sort of blew up, like, like blew off in, 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 a, in a good way. And I remember, um, well, we were just talking about this earlier, actually, um, which is kind of funny that I remember, because um, we recorded that album in Sweden, um, like countryside, small village, and whatever, you know. So we lived in this house, and uh, I, I, like at the end of the session, you know, we were just sitting on the porch and like drinking beers and just, you know, whatever, just shooting the shit. And we were just talking about like, like, like honestly, like you know, just saying stuff like, could you imagine, you know, us being like thirty six or something and still doing this, and we all just like 
laughed. We were like, dude, that's like, we, obviously, you know, we were like convinced that we would not be around um, like, like we are today. And now when I'm looking back and, and specifically remembering that sort of conversation that we had, it, it makes me happy, dude, you know, like honestly that we, we did, yeah, we did pull it off for sure. And, you know, speaking of your catalog, you've got quite a bit of catalog material. Add this album to it. So, you know, why? I mean, how do you see some of the songs from this fitting into, into touring or what is going to be your approach to, to touring? Well, it doesn't, like, you know, coming up with a set list, it doesn't get any easier, man. <laughs> I'll tell you that. I mean, when you got nine studio albums and, and you, you, you got to play the old stuff. That's just the way it is. You can't deny it. If you do, then you're an idiot. I'm sorry, but that's what people want to hear, man. You know, they they want to hear the old songs. So you 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 need to keep that in mind for one, you know, and make sure that you kind of have something for everyone, and you know, try to try to do stuff from at least a song, you know, from each album, and then you know, new stuff too. But like, like I hate it. I just hate it when bands are like force feeding the fans. Uh, the new stuff that 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 it kind of like you know that the the set list would predominantly be new stuff. I don't think it ever works out. Like that's just the way it is, really. But you know, we'll see. You know, that's the thing. You know, we we'll just you know we already have songs picked out that we are gonna try out. And uh, the only way to find out what's gonna work is to really play them live and see how people react and. And I'll go from there. Do you have any ideas what you think are going to be the, the strong tracks for life? Or, or well, I mean, I, I could see the, the singles, the uh, Morgan and the title track being the ones that will probably stick. But then again, I mean, what the hell do I know? It's, I mean, it could be. But, you know, the truth is that, you know, like sometimes you'd be surprised, you know, what songs actually end up being like, you know, there, there are certain songs that we're like, you know, this is going to kick ass live. And then it's like, the reaction is kind of mellow. And then at, in a couple of years, you know, the song just gets kind of buried, you know, you know, it, it is what it is. Absolutely. Uh, so I have to touch on some of these bonus tracks that you guys recorded with uh, Danger Zone. Um, oh. How did you put your spin on that? What is your affinity for that song? Can you explain? Well, Top Gun, dude. <laughs> you know, I mean, we're just that generation that we were like, you know, this, you know, when it came out. And of course, you know, like that sort of that sort of thing and Tom Cruise and all that, you know, it's just the coolest thing ever. And everybody remembers that song. And and I think it, well, it, it, it is a really good song to, to start with. And, you know, it's it's already kind of metal when you think about it, you know. So it was very easy to just sort of do the original arrangements and just dress it up in metal, you know, and that's that. So, yeah, that was a lot of fun. Plus, you know, it's not a secret that we enjoy doing little goofy covers here and there. So, you know, why the hell not? Yeah, and obviously love the fact that you touched on the plasmatics too. So, I mean, you know, talk about, you know, doing that. And, and I think they've sort of been... A in my opinion, for the majority of people, they've sort of been a little bit forgotten. I know, yeah, I know, definitely. And it's 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 actually weird because, well, I mean, I was on this plasmatics slash Wendy Williams kick like right before we st started recording, and you know that's why that well that's how we actually ended up uh, ended up. Uh, covering it, but anyway, my point is that you know, like when I, I was, I, I would actually listen throughout all these, all their uh, albums and stuff, and to me, like I, I realized it for the first time, because um, you know, being the huge Wasp fan that I am, I love, I, I love the first two Wasp albums. I think you know the, the Plasmatics, they were kind of like the pre version of, of of Wasp, because I mean, there's a lot of similarities. So I mean, like. Dollars to Donuts, Black Lola was a freaking Plasmatics fan for sure. And even though it was like they had this 
punk. Well, I guess it was punk, but it was it's pretty brilliant. Like musically, I'm very well played. So yeah, and then you know we got the guest vocalist, so to sort of bring the song even more alive. So it's definitely one of my favorite covers. Hey, it's Alexi from Chilling Bottom, and you are watching Artisan News. Um, well, I remember I was I'd probably like seven or eight or something like that. My older sister, she had gotten the um, C cassette, of course, you know, of the first Wasp album with pictures and everything. I saw the pictures, you know, I, and I heard uh, I want to be somebody. And I was like, it's like these guys are, first of all, scary, but in a very cool, appealing way. And and of course, I thought that, I mean, like I was convinced that they're crazy and lunatic, lunatics and criminals and like all that, which was which was just pretty awesome, you know? And, uh, yeah, but still, <clears throat> to this day, it, it, is, it is a great album, you know? There's, every single track is pretty strong and... And even though it was, you know, part of that so-called hair metal uh, scene, it it definitely stood out, just being so much angrier and darker than the rest of them. So, um, yeah. And Blackie's voice is just like, like, wow. And Chris Holmes is just, he's just funny. <laughs> and you mentioned that whole, I mean, this was obviously pre-internet, so everything that you heard, like rumors or that they were crazy or everything, no. you know, like, seemed to be truer than it is. Mm, because I know. I love the mystique, you know. You know. The mystique, exactly. The mystique of the whole And I miss, I mean, it, it, like, I, I miss the fact that it's quite not there anymore, you know, because there's just too many, like, everybody, everybody needs to know everything about everyone, and it seems like everyone feels that need to tell the whole world their friggin' life story. And I'm not quite there yet. I'm not saying I'm not saying that I'm better than anyone anybody because I'm not. I mean that's not the fact, but I'm just not into that whole thing. Only because I, I did love love and still do love love that mistake about bands and like my idols in general. So I mean, hey <clears throat> if you ask me Wasp, they're still lunatics and criminals. End of story. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of mystique, any bands that you're fans of that you think still might have that kind of mystique or any new bands that you think can portray that mystique? Um, yeah, there are, you know. And I, I think it's kind of up to up to yourself, too, as, as far as, like, you know, how much are you willing to avoid you know stuff that you know you see in the internet you know just and and uh like marilyn manson you know i mean like i actually try i actually go out of my way to not know too many facts about that dude because like he's just one of those characters and that that that, that i love the way i see him you know and, but you know what though I mean like everything that I everything that I think about him is probably true <laughs> anyway but you know he's he well he's quite the character yeah so um, how do you view success you know the landscape has changed obviously since you guys first got into the industry so have you had to rethink or recalibrate what success is with this album and how do you view success with this album uh it it's just you know it, it's pretty much the same thing as as like the songwriting process just try not to think about stuff like that you know honestly though i mean you're gonna get distracted and not in a good way so like i said you know you know it is what it is and and at the end of the day you know as long as you know how to play your goddamn instrument as long as your band knows how to kick ass live and can handle a lot of endless non-stop touring, then you're always going to be okay. So, yeah. And you're one, you know, one of my little cousin's favorite guitars, you know, he holds you up in very high esteem. So I wanted to know, I mean, who you thought, you know, who, who you think is maybe uh, 
one of your influences or maybe two or three that you could share with us, maybe even one that might be underrated that that might fall off the radar that was very influential to you. Hmm. Well, I mean, there's definitely the uh, the Ozzy guy. I mean, the first three, you know, Randy Rhodes, Jake Lee, and Zach Wild, and uh, well, Steve Vai. He was well. He's Steve Vai. I don't need to explain that. <laughs> and uh, somebody who might I don't know. I mean, well, basically Mark Knopfler. I mean, he's the reason why I started like how I be became obsessed with guitar you know because i was like three or four years old when i first you know heard one of their songs because you know dice rate for for example was on like high rotation in our house household so i don't know i just became yeah i it did to, and that that guy's amazing still is like like wow and um well there's always guys that i like I forget to mention, and I feel kind of bad about it, but somebody brought up Jeff Waters today, and yeah, he, him definitely annihilator. Like, he is, uh, the way it's like so goddamn tight, you know, the rhythm parts and everything, you know, that definitely has been a huge influence on me, for sure. So, I mean, so that's one, you know.